The Surface Book 3 started shipping in the UK recently. I picked mine up last week. I've been putting it through its paces. Let's have a talk about it. Here it is, the Surface Book 3. I've gone for the 13.5 inch model, 512 gig SSD, 32GB of RAM. I don't think the 32GB of RAM is a sensible option from Microsoft. I think it should have been 16 gig 512. You, how are you going to make use of that 32 gig of RAM on a machine with a passively cooled i7? Passively cooled on the 30.5 inch, and then you've got a fan in the 15 inch. Same processor, mind you. The 10th gen i7 that was found in a lot of Ultrabooks earlier this year. Uh, the design has not changed at all. So, same ports. And if you're watching this video, you probably already know what this device is not capable of and the the lack of changes from Microsoft. But there you go. The two USB Type-A ports, I, I, I really do like those. I can plug in my dongle and my mouse is connected. No need for an adapter. Full-size SD and a USB-C, which is still not Thunderbolt, yes. Microsoft are making excuses about this. I, I am calling them excuses. Something to do with security, but everyone's doing it. They want you to buy the Surface Dock. That's what that's what I think. Anyway, at least you can charge. You can get USB-C hubs to display out Ethernet, multiple USB ports. That is still capable of that, so that's good. I don't think people are buying this to plug in their eGPU setups, like dock it at home and plug it in. You have a GTX 1650 in the 13.5 inch. Anyway, let's talk about the party trick very quickly. Obviously, you press the eject button and the screen detaches, and or, you know what they call the clipboard. This is the entire computer in the screen, and then you've got a GPU and battery in the base. So, as we move on to the base, it is very solid, it's fantastic to type on, and uh, you don't get laptops really these days that have a base like this of course it's all about making them light and portable and this this machine is not really that it's quite chunky but you know you know about the design you know what it is it trying to be it's trying to be a unique experience of a detachable display that you know you attach this way and then you can draw and take notes although it's very weighty like this you will want to use it screen portion only for most of the time the the battery in the tablet portion in the clipboard doesn't last that long i would say you're looking at three hours with sensible use but the rest of the device connected is probably more eight to ten hours not close to what they were quoting but still a good amount of time it's really going to depend on how you use the device what the brightness level is set to the touchpad of course, it would have been nice if they made this bigger, given the size of trap pads on laptops this year. This looks kind of funny. Well, on this size, it's not too bad. On the 15 inch, it's funny to see how small it is, really. But it's a great touchpad. It's like what Apple do with their machines. You've got the software, hardware, harmony, and the same things going on here. This is great to use. Gestures are smooth, and it's very accurate. No hiccups, and... Yeah, it's a good click. Right, what you get in the box, just the power adapter, actually. And in the UK, we had a pre-order offer. You can pick a pen, color of your choice. So I bought, went for the red. And as you know, it attaches to the side. I do forget which way around it goes, and that's very irritating. But anyway, very strong magnet, so it's good. I won't plug it in just yet. I want to run a game on battery power and let you know how that goes with the GTX 1650 Max-Q. I think it's quite capable, the card that's in here. Given its form factor, of uh, the 13.5 inch, uh, the 15 inch laptop, well, you know, the market's full of uh, 15 inch devices with graphics cards in to play games and they will do better than the 15 inch model. But anyway, we're here to talk about the 13.5 inch model and what this device is capable of, I'm sure. You've heard a lot about what this device can't do. You know, it's not supposed to replace your gaming laptop, your workstation that does 4K video editing. Don't buy this to replace that because it's not a replacement for that. 
However, I would say the 10th gen CPU in here, albeit, you know, passively cool, does really well. And the 10th gen i7 in all the laptops before this have been rated really well. It's a very capable processor with the Iris Plus graphics. So if you are using the screen, the clipboard portion only, then at least Photoshop has got some graphical capability to tap into. And as Windows 10 boots up, we can see Windows Hello logged me in very quickly. Windows Hello is really good on this machine. Uh, just quickly about the webcams. I'm sure you've heard everyone say the webcams on here are pretty good for webcams. I mean, you know what the laptops are like there, are like out there. They they just have 720p cameras. They they don't look very good, but this, this is a good camera on the front. Let me just quickly have a word about the screen quality here. So, you know, we've got a IPS panel. Um, Microsoft will be using the same one uh, in the book two, so there's not any improvement here. It's it's not that color accurate as we know, but it's a great looking IPS panel. It doesn't come close to what some of the new technologies we've seen on the market. I know we've got some OLED laptops, we've got a QLED laptop with a Samsung Flex, and uh, more recently the Mini LED from MSI. And so there's nothing special going on here, but it's still a very nice IPS panel quick word about screen wobble you can see here that the device does wobble a bit when you're moving it around I and mean, you're not going to move it quite as vigorously as this and on your lap you'll be surprised i know people say this is top heavy but when they actually get the device there's hardly any wobble i've used 360 convertibles uh, two in one devices that wobble more than this um it's very sturdy and I expect it to stay that way, um, given the user feedback on the book one and two. People say that this remains as sturdy. Just booting up Photoshop, let's have a look at how the pen does on this device. Now, you know, you, you will compare it to things like the iPad and Samsung tablets. And this device does not compete with those in terms of accuracy. The Entrig technology that Microsoft, Microsoft purchased is uh, not up there. However, that's not to say it's not a great experience, great for note taking, and artists do use these devices. So just zoom in there, and uh, I've got smoothing on 40%. So what that tries to do is remove the jitter. If I just take out smoothing, you will see what I mean on devices like this. There's that diagonal jitter, and it's very common on Windows tablets with touch stylus input. Uh, there are a few out there, unique ones that have Wacom EMR, and those are better. But anyway, you can use utilities, you can use Photoshop to smoothen those out so you don't get as much jitter. And when you're actually drawing and taking notes on it, no problem. Of course, this experience is a bit different. Something you get on, say, the iPad where you've got plastic to glass. This has a more soft feeling, which is great for drawing and writing. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider here, running at 60 FPS on battery power. Very smooth. Of course, we are dipping into the lower 50s, but for the most part, quite smooth. Uh, let's just... Let's just stealth kill this guy. You can see it's running very nicely. Of course it's not on high settings at all. You are going to have to lower the settings for your favourite games. But the fact that you can run this sort of thing is pretty nice to know. And so you will get those extra frames when you are plugged into the mains. Next up, I'm going to boot Forza Horizon 4, Windows 10 store game. Uh, flip the clipboard around so it's attached this way and plugged in PS4 controller. Ironically, the game can be played on Windows 10 or Xbox, just one purchase. And I'm going to play with a PS4 controller. Just while the intro movie is playing, we'll just have a quick word about the speakers. They... Stereo separation is good, but they're not very loud. They don't have any low end. They're going to do the job. They're really good for voice, 
but you know, music is going to leave something to be desired. Unfortunately, best mute the radio volume. And here we can see, once again, very nice picture. I don't have my frame uh, counter. Um, I haven't tried to get MSI Afterburner to work with um, the Windows 10 Store app yet, but I'm sure you can. And you know, it runs great. There are people talking about what the CPU and GPU aren't, but I'm here to tell you, it is. Um, something you can play and have a bit of fun on. It's, this looks and runs great. Again, not high settings, you're gonna to have to sacrifice quality, but if you're getting 60 FPS, plug in a controller, it's a lot of fun. Ah. Almost. In IRL, I can definitely drive, I promise. And yeah, I do like to play a manual. But as you can see, it's performing well. And I, I know this game has micro stutters on various platforms. It doesn't matter how powerful your system is. You're probably going to get micro stutters with this this game. And that's a shame. But nonetheless, performing well here. Lastly, I'm going to run Fighting EX Layer. You know, strange name. Game by, uh, fighting game by Akira. Um, I have to lower the resolution um, and it's a 16 by 9 resolution it's the only way I can get the game to run so this game has no support for the aspect ratio of the screen the 3 by 2 the 3 by 2 on the screen is brilliant by the way I mean, great for productivity apps uh, surfing the web and when you use it in portrait mode it's not silly tall like a 16 by 9 screen would be I don't think I can go back to 16 by 9 now a key selling point for a Windows tablet would be the full fat web browser at your disposal. All your classic Win32 apps can live on here too. Touch based user interaction is not that fun, mind you. Windows has come a long way, but it's no iPad. You can always bump up the display scaling if you have large fingers. Let's get into the game anyway. See here? We'll see in a moment. This runs well. It, yeah, of course, shame about the black borders, but if the game doesn't support the 3 by 2 or 16 by 10 resolutions, what, what can you do? So in addition to testing these games, I want to get a bunch of emulators on here, see how PS3 runs, GameCube, PS2, and see what kind of performance can get out of it. So subscribe, hit the notification bell icon, and watch out for that video. No undervolting options for this. Nothing that I've seen so far anyway. It's completely locked. And uh, Microsoft have done it purposely because they managed to lock one of their previous service devices with firmware update. However, the graphics card... Now, just to clarify, the games you've seen so far have not been using this overclock, but you can use this tool to overclock the GTX in here. I've put the memory clock to 1500 and the core clock to about 150 was a stable mark. Now, stable is going to vary game to game. 150 was great for Horizon and uh, I'll be using it with the emulators to see how they get on. But it did not work for Tomb Raider. Uh, after a little bit of time, the screen just goes black and sometimes I've had it crash. So do not recommend it for Tomb Raider, but it doesn't seem like it needs it anyway. You're probably going to squeeze about 5 to 10% more power using these overclocks when the GPU in here compared to a laptop with the same graphics card that isn't in this form factor. I would say you're probably losing about 15% of that power. And there we have it. That's the Surface Book 3. It's, it's a fantastic device. I really like it. I've been wanting a Surface Book for a long time and having the 10th gen CPU in here is the point where I was like right okay it's got compromises yes this device is all about those little compromises but there's no deal breakers and that CPU is plenty powerful to do as, as you can see play those games Photoshop runs very nicely I mean 
the the CPU is not going to match what's on the market. So if you're looking for value for money, this is not it. This is not value for money, and it's more about compromise. If you love the form factor, you're not going to get anything else like it, really. This is a unique device in that sense. Even though Microsoft did not update the design, it's still unique, still has its place on the market, especially, I, I think, the 13.5-inch model. Listen, let's uh, start uh, talking about it below in the comments. Do you like this device? Do you have a Surface Book 1? Do you still love that? Uh, let's start a conversation in the comments, get chatting about what's good, not so good about this, and maybe any tips and tricks you have for this device. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe. This is the Technology signing out. Take care. What a stupid name.